Today I'm going to be tying up a pattern I've been kind of working on a little bit and I think I've reached my destination. So I've made a couple variations to it as I've gone along um, and with each variation it's proven to be very productive. So I'm going to go ahead and name this the Guild May because it's got gills like a mayfly nymph, betis nymph. The May because it's a mayfly. I couldn't find much that rhymes with betis. Not that guild rhymes with May, but anyway. It sounded too formal. I'm starting out on a size 16 um, extra long hook. I'm using some Vivas uh, GSP in white. And I'm doing it in white because I'm going to be tying some ribbing on here. And I want the color to be lighter showing through here. So once I get to the back, I'm actually going to take several wraps, one over the top of the other, to create a, just a little nub or bump here at the very back. And it doesn't need to be extreme. From there, we'll just go ahead and move our way back forward a little bit, and we'll go ahead and tie in our tails. Tails, I'm just going to turn to my good old tried and true, the pheasant tail. I've got three fibers. We're going to go ahead and tie those on the top of the hook shank here. Just with a few wraps. So it's much too long. Which is why I only take a couple of wraps. That'll allow me to pull these tails backwards to the length that I want them. And that's going to do me good. So from there, we're just going to go ahead and travel on back to where that nub or bump is. And hopefully you'll be able to see kind of what that will do for us. And then I'm going to just wrap back over. So what you'll see here is it creates that nice tri-tail which really is just for me. Um, I know when it gets in the water, those tails are just going to suck up together. They're not going to keep that really nice mayfly betis three tail look. They're all going to just suck together. I'm using the balance of this pheasant tail to build up a little bit of bulk. For the ribbing on the pattern, I'm turning to a micro tubing and this happens to be a, a golden stone. So now we're going to go ahead and tie our micro tubing on. And I like using the micro tubing because I can really stretch it. Um, which will come in handy as we're building kind of a tapered abdomen. But it'll also let me as I'm tying back towards those tails, you can see I can stretch this. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring it back and I'm going to stretch it pretty tight because I want less material back here at the very back to keep more of that tapered profile. Got that kind of secured on right where I want it. Next we're going to tie in a piece of brassy sized copper wire. I'm going to be counter ribbing this so I want this to kind of lay on the lens side of the hook here. And I'm going to just draw that back to length, and I'm just going to finish securing that on. So for the gills, we're going to use a bleached uh, peacock curl, and I've got these in a calabatus color. So as we're tying in the peacock curl here, Gonna want to get that secured with a thread wrap or two. And key for me when I'm using these because they're so damn delicate is to be very gentle on these thread wraps. Especially, I know I've said this a million times, but working with a thread like GSP or a nano silk, they're wonderful because it's difficult to break and they leave very little footprint. But the bad side of them is they don't break and they're very strong. So if you pull really tight, you can cut right through that peacock curl. 
So I've got my thread here in my bobbin cradle. I'm just going to go ahead and grab this micro tubing. I'm going to take a wrap around the very back here. As I come around towards my side, I'm going to pull that a little bit tighter. And as I move up, I'm going to loosen it a little bit, and that's going to make these bumps a little bit bigger. And I'm purposely going to leave some gaps in between each wrap of the micro tubing. And that's going to be the groove that our gills or our peacock curl is going to run through. But you see if you just kind of manage the tension on this, less tension will make these wraps a little bit thicker. So it can create that nice tapered look that we're looking for. We're going to have a nice thorax on here, so I don't need to take that too far up. But I am going to secure this. a couple thread wraps on either side just to make sure I've got it locked into place. I'm going to turn my vise a little bit just so I have better access to this. And if you pull on the microtube and stretch it out a little bit when you make this cut, it's going to suck right back into those wraps. So back with our thread in the bobbin cradle. This is the most delicate part of the fly, so just be take your time and be careful because this will break right off on you. Don't let it hit the hook point or it'll break off on you as well. So I'll take the first couple of wraps letting this just follow that micro tubing into the grooves that we created. Once I get past the hook point a little bit I can go ahead and use my rotary feature to let this just follow those gaps all the way up to the front. Go ahead and remove our thread from the bobbin cradle. We'll take a wrap over the top of this. Breaks off really easy. Fortunately, I got one wrap in on it, so I can probably still secure that down. So finally for the abdomen, we're going to grab our brassy size copper wire. I'm going to counter rib this, which means I'm wrapping the opposite direction. I type wrap the tubing as well as the hackle, or the peacock curl. What this is going to do is make this a little bit more durable. I'm just going to take this right up to the same place we left off. And hopefully you can see this counter wrap is going right across those peacock curl. And once I get up here to the front, I'll take a wrap. Go ahead and secure that. And once we have it secured, we're just going to go ahead and helicopter this off. So at this point, we're pretty much done with the abdomen of the fly. You can see we still have our nice tritels there, and we've got that peacock curl making a nice gill. Hence the gilled may, mayfly, or the gilled may. Um, and by using the white thread, it just makes that microtubing kind of pop a little bit more almost to a root beer kind of shade. If I'd used black thread it would have been much darker and it wouldn't have popped quite as much. That's one of the adjustments that I've made um, as I've been tying this. At this point I'm going to go ahead we're going to whip finish remove that from our whip finisher and then I'm going to go ahead with my thread cutter and we're going to come on in and cut that thread. The reason I'm doing that is I want to transition to a black thread as I worked on the, th the thorax here. Go ahead and we'll start just like we do on a regular hook. Take a couple of wraps there and then I'm going to wrap it backwards to where I want the thorax to start. And then I can go ahead and cut the excess of this thread off. So we've just switched from the white thread to a black thread. So next we're going to tie on a wing case and I'm going to use pheasant tail again. Um, make sure you use extra fibers here. Um, that's one place that I've struggled over the years is making these too thin. Um, you want these nice and thick. You can see the pheasant tail has a kind of a dark side and a light side. I want to tie these in with the light side up so that when I 
fold this over, it'll be exposing that dark side. So I want to get that right on the top of the hook shank here. I'm going to cut off a good chunk of that excess. And I'm going to just draw this backwards so that those butt ends are not over the hook eye. From there I can go ahead and secure those down. And I'll double check to make sure that's kind of where I want them over the eye of the hook and it's looking all right. I'm just going to tie back to where I want my wing case to be. Now to create a nice beefy thorax here we're going to go ahead and tie or finger dub on some rusty brown squirrel dubbing. I like the squirrel because it is a little bit leggy and we kind of want that. We want kind of some spikes sticking out here to kind of imitate legs. So we're going to go ahead and wrap back on that wing case and we want to take a few thread wraps here so that wing case jumps up over the top. And I'll tighten this down a little bit. And we'll just go ahead and move right up to about an eye length behind the eye of the hook here. I'll go ahead and sweep as many of those fibers back to clear the eye. And to make these just a little bit more bushy, I'm just going to go ahead and take a dubbing brush here and just kind of gently stroke these fibers, some of these fibers out. Not on the top, mostly here on the sides and the bottom. And I'll probably pull enough out that it's going to be too much and we'll just trim it off. Next, we're going to tie on some calabatus colored goose biots. So I'm going to tie one on my side of the hook. I'm going to take a loose wrap around the back side. As I come towards me, I'm going to start pulling this tighter. So we end up with a nice leg sticking out there. So next we'll tie in the other um, goose biot. We're going to tie this on the lens side of the hook. I'll go ahead and let that lay a little bit high, um, just knowing that as I wrap it, it's going to pull over to the side a little bit. And sometimes I get kind of out of control like that, and that's okay because you can actually just modify that here. Plus I need to make it a little shorter, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the butt end. I'm going to draw that back until I get it to the length I want it. I'm going to have those legs kind of in a downward, projecting downward a little bit. We'll go ahead and we want to cut the butt ends of this off as close as we can. The butt ends of both of the biots. And I'll just come back in with my thread and make sure I've got those kind of cleaned up a little bit. And I'll take a few wraps backwards. This is kind of where the fly really gets its final look. I like to take a comb and run it through these fibers and just help them line up a little bit. Kind of after I've got those combed, we'll just go ahead and throw a wrap over the top. Go ahead and pull those back and take a couple of wraps right behind the eye. We'll come in with our scissors and we want to cut this off really close as well. So from here we're just going to kind of clean that head up a little bit. Where those butt ends are kind of showing through. Start building up a bit of a black head here. I don't want too big of a pronounced head. So finally we'll just go ahead and whip finish this. I want to take most of these wraps towards the back, away from the eye, just so that the head is a little bit thicker at the back rather than at the front. Go ahead and tie that off, grab my thread cutting tool. So here's the final 
guild may, a guild mayfly. Kind of a variation on several different patterns. Everything from a pheasant tail to a rat hare's ear um, with my own kind of take on that. Uh, you can see the gills are there. They're not just puffy and out of control. They slide right into those grooves on the micro uh, tube ribbing, ribbing here. Got our tritails and the nice little legs and our wing cover and um, this thing will hunt. Um, throw a hook in your vise and give this one a shot.